Hi everyone, Brett back altitude scale modeling. Today we're going to look at Mang Special Edition T90A with a little bear and a little Putin wannabe figure. If you recall, I did a review, I'll show you a picture of it and a link at the end of the video, of a Mang kit with a Trump figure for Christmas. Now we got a Putin figure and a bear. Isn't that nice? So, we're looking at this kit. I know Ivan Jensen Taylor over at Northern Modeler loves T90s. But we're looking at this kit. Check it out. It's Mang, so I'm sure it's great. Check out the little special edition. I don't think I've ever reviewed a T90. If I did, it was a trumpeter a while back. So we'll see how this one looks. Uh, it says Clarion on here. I'm not sure if that means who made the resin parts or what. And there is absolutely nothing on this box. It's like a special edition surprise. And it's still sealed as you can see. So I'm going to turn on some lights now. I had them off for the glare as you're about to see. But let's get her open. Take a look. Uh, I don't even see a kit number on here. Well, they got nothing to say on here. Oh, there it is. ES005, 135th scale. Cut off some plastic and take a look here. All right, go off the cover. See it over here. Put some stuff out of the way. So we've got some things that we will look at. At the end, looks like it comes with a stand, comes with a metal, comes with a resin bear and Putin, comes with a whole lot of plastic. Black plastic, green plastic, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Green plastic plus the hull, some photo etch, some cables, some clear parts, some decals, some painting guidelines, and some instructions. And the tracks are all in black plastic, which we'll look at later. Set this on down there. Start with a hull. Not heat sealed bags, at least not for the whole part. T90s are really nice looking tank. A whole string of poly caps. <clears throat> In the lower hull. Copyright 2012, so this is a 2012 T90 from Ming. Good looking, solid, very solid plastic. Good detail underneath. Side detail, there's no interior in this kit. Good place for the torsion bars to go. <clears throat> Top of the hull. Yeah, nice detail. There's no skid plate anti-slip detail on this part of the hull. There's lots of these injector parts you're going to have to remove. Again, 2012 TS, which is pretty sure Tyrannosaurus, Meng's code name for the larger kits. So, good looking hull detail. I saw a turret in here. Let's go there next. And a mallet. So, you've got squishy rubber feeling mallet part in tan and as an extra bonus you got a couple of helmets in squishy rubber 
and you've got the turret which is nicely detailed no sink marks oops no flash a few spur points you gotta remove overall good looking I'll put this back so I don't lose the helmets or anything Because this isn't the top of my build list, I'll probably go back with the Trump kit. Since you know they are friends, Trump and Putin, not me and Trump. All right, let's get on to some of the main parts here. Uh, looks like a deditching log, a barrel, some hoses, some cabling. Little attachment points. Uh, looks like one of the covers, parts of the suspension. So I'm sure somewhere you can find a metal barrel for this. Not sure if it really matters because cleaning up the sea line is hard. As far as a deditching log, you can go out and get a stick in your backyard about the same size if you want, or just detail that up. It's got some nice panel line detail, some nice rivet detail. Nice wood texture, very delicate wiring parts, hoses. There's a barrel, some suspension parts inside of the barrel. Doesn't look like any ejector pin marks in the way of anything. Be careful taking off those delicate little hoses and cables and next we got us side skirts more the top of the hull <clears throat> more delicate hosing cabling Connectors, looks like fuel barrels, sides of the hull, side skirts, tops over the wheels and the tracks. Again, you got a lot of these big ejector pin mark, ejector pin, push pins. But you're seeing more and more in kits these days. You see them a lot in the old days. But apparently we're seeing them more. As you can see, some are removed here. Some aren't removed there. Easy enough to remove. Oh, jumped right out of my hand. But again, nice Meng detail. All around, gonna hold a nice weather, nice wash. I think that's probably the engine deck cover. Two piece barrels, some more of the delicate detail parts, headlight covers. You're gonna wanna. Watch out for these parts. You can see there's some little sprue gates there and there. But taking them off, be very careful. Just like I am putting it back in the bag. Make sure I set it aside so it doesn't get broke. And we've got some wheels. Some more of the hull parts. And be careful you don't cut yourself when you're taking it out of the bag. Or drop the knife like I almost just did. That would have hurt. So again, some nice detail parts. Water cans or gas cans. Dry sprockets. Some more hatch coverings. Some more delicate parts. Looks like parts for holding tools, clamps. There's a machine gun with... A slight, uh, it's right here. Can't really see it, but it does have a little bit of an opening to the barrel, so you can drill it out some more carefully. But it's a good-looking gun. And again, for a 2012 mold, not a lot of flash on it. It's going on seven years old now.
the other side again we've got some of those big injector pin parts it's like maybe it's a commander's hatch not bad not bad at all your typical quality main kit I know you're all just hanging around to see the bear and pooping. But that's part of the fun. Sitting and waiting or just fast forward to the end. Because that's technology. You can do that. Some more hatches. Some more little delicate parts. Looks like an antenna. Some more brackets. So lots of tiny little parts for the outside of this kit. Some more of the reactive armor. Tiny little fan parts. Of hand covers, fan shrouds, whatever you want to call them. But I do like to look at this, feel of this plastic. <clears throat> so, as I talk about, it looks like a small antenna. Some of the more of the um, hole parts, bottom of the turret. Looks like another mat like cover right there, two piece. Some more hatches. Might be able to see some detail inside open hatches, which might be some of this. And this is a bag of road wheels. There are Looks like three sprues of road wheels and torsion bars. I think I'm going to get it open. So, three matching sprues of road wheels and torsion bars. Nice lug detail. And it does over there, I saw photo weights give you uh, a template to put over here to spray the wheels, which is a nice touch. Or you can use one of these, you get it at the dollar store, just tape off the size you need. Either way is going to work. But there's your nice road wheel detail. No ejector pin marks on the road wheels anywhere, either side. There's uh, some detail on top of the wheels. And a seam that I'll have to check my references and see if it's supposed to be there. So there's three sprues of those. And two sprues of looks like idler sprockets. Sorry, my paper towels fell over. And two matching sprues, so let me take them both out if we need to get one of them out. Come on. Alright, let's take this one out. That's why I wouldn't come out. Right there. They were stuck together. Looks like some more covers for storage boxes, probably. I think these might be inside parts of an idler wheel. And for the suspension, I am not a tank expert. I build for the enjoyment of it, and I check my references as I'm building so I can learn things. Nice detail on both sides of those doors. No ejector pin marks on either side. Nice touch. So, two of those. And we'll get a couple more of the green sprues left. Kind of looks like a full engine. Maybe not. Maybe. Hard to say. Because there's looks like manifolds. This looks like part of the block. Valve covers. 
cylinder heads, water pump. I'm wondering if this comes with an engine. That'd be nice. I have to figure out how to open the hatch though. But we're modelers. We figure those things out. And it would be nice if we had an engine because I love building engines as all of you know. Building detailing engine. Here's my current 429 engine for the Impala that I'm just painted Chevy GM red. Anyway, I digress. Yes, even at 10,000 feet, we can use big words like digress. And if I'm correct, there are just two more bags of green. This looks like it has a supercharger or a turbocharger. Is there, this all looks like a turbocharger or a supercharger. So I'm thinking, yes, engine. Woohoo! Because if it is, they put some good detail into that supercharger, turbocharger. Looks really nice. Nice! I like the little surprises. That's what she said. And last bag of green plastic. Two matching screws of more detail parts. And this reactive armor parts, I'm not sure what the rest of them are. It looks like a shifter, throttle. There you go. Two of these. Big old opening right here of something that I'm sure they had and took off, but look right here. Piece of equipment. Looks like cooling vents are on there. Of the detail. It's good sharp detail. Very nice. Now we've got the track. Inside this trash bag here. Are two, four, six, eight sprues. Plus a lot of little ones. This looks like a jig. For assembling the tracks. And these are rubber pads. Which are going to take some time to clean up. Put in a good movie, sit down, start cleaning. Like I said, these are rubber or rubbery like plastic. There are a whole lot of those. Obviously, since there's a lot of tracks, let's take all these out so we don't mess them up. Give them a count. We got one screw with us. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 12, 14, 16 of these with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 24. 16 of these with 24 rubber pads. And then 8 of these. And we'll look at the instructions and figure out how to connect. So, these tracks, guide horns, all of it are going to be a nice, fun, sit down with a movie, like I said, clean up, glue together, use your jig. And we've got one screw of gray plastic, which has figures that aren't Putin. Um, there's three sets of legs, three, so there's three figures, you saw the helmets that are made of foam, I'm not sure what this part is here, maybe a base, but you've got three nicely posable figures with 
there's two half guys here for sitting inside one of the hatches and then three full-size guys nice detail on the uniforms on their heads and on their legs so figures are included you don't see that as much as you used to and we have Use your Google Translator to translate what that is, but it is a metal that does not want to be opened in a very nice felt box. With a pin on the back, you can wear this to your favorite Russian meeting. Or hobby show we're just stick it on the display stand this talks about the metal and it looks like Chinese it's Meng is a Chinese company so I'm just you're gonna have to figure this out all on your own what it means but it's a nice little touch to be added into the kit and we'll get to Mr. Premier Putin and his friendly polar bear. This looks like a grizzly bear, not a polar bear. Polar bears are different shapes. This is 3D printed, it looks like. Well, maybe not. That's resin casting on the bottom. Nice texture to the skin. Ow, you bit me. I like it, even the skin seems to hang down. The fur, I mean, sorry. So, it looks like a grizzly, not a polar bear. Heads are shaped a little different. Polar bears have longer legs. Grizzly bear. Mr. Putin himself. All shirtless, muscular, studly looking. His muscles, muscular little arms. So, we got our bear, we got our premiere. Since it's either a grizzly or a black bear, you're obviously going to have to paint it. You're going to have to find that picture of Putin on his horse with his shirt off. There's a part here that looks like the way he's holding on to it, like a leash or a stirrup or something. <coughs> this is some sort of display stand that folds up. I'm sure it'll be in the directions. So I made a cardboard. Here we have decals, three parts of photo etch, and a cable. decal decals. This is the template I was talking about. You put it over the road wheels, spray the wheels, piece of cake. These kind of look like storage boxes. Nice firm photo etch and then of course the vents for the engine and I'm assuming tow cable and all the numbers you could possibly want for a Russian battle tank and markings and the decals are made by Meng in China, so I've never really seen a problem with Meng decals. You can see they're cut really close. So you won't have a lot of decal film to worry about. Slip all this back in here so I don't lose it. Make sure you don't get it in between the tissue paper and the decals. Or you missed the bag entirely. And clear parts, which we're not going to open because they're armored clear parts that are flat. They're going to be just fine. And another set of Chinese decals and North Korean decals. 
And color call out. Victory Day Moscow. Sorry, not North Korean. This is Victory Parade 2016. Victory Parade 2010. A different Victory Parade in 2010. This one's Volgogar. This one's Rostovodan. This one is Russian Federation 7th Military Base. This one is 5th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade, Albania, Albania, uh, 2013. I personally like this one. I like the color scheme. And then how to paint your figures. Right there. And your half figures. Where they go, and they, apparently they got a little thing to send them on in there so they don't fall down. And your half of cover to sit them on if you're going to put them in the turret. How to put your display base together. And this has color callouts, but I'm not sure what color they're for or what company they're for. Maybe they're just generic color callouts. See right there. But I think AK's got a thing with Meng, or MIG's got a thing with Meng. Here's a more detailed color callouts. These are different versions. This is the 19th Motorized Rifle Brigade, North Caucasus. This is 27th Separate Guards Motorized Rifle Brigade, Moscow Military. This is same company, different paint scheme. This is 19th motorized, same as this one, and that's the one I like. And there's more than one I like. I like that scheme on there, so when I do build this, I'll probably end up doing that one. Nice to give you lots of color call outs, and finally, directions, instructions. So you've got all your Chinese writing. All your English writing, if you want to pause it and read it. New model, new approach, new quality. It talks about how the model was made. That's very interesting. I am going to have to read that. And you've got more of the English inside here. And then I'm assuming Japanese and Russian. This it's a nice little touch tells you what actually parts are for the on the tank. So marker lights, modulator, hull storage boxes, front and rear. We've seen that before. Very nice. Now this is actually a history of the tank in English. And Chinese, Japanese, and Russian. And I'm assuming these are warnings about only an adult should be doing it or a supervising adult. Tools you'll need. And then we start with road wheels. Now, you're going to have to paint the rubber part before the or after, whichever, because you got the template, so I painted them all black before and then put the color in. Putting the hole together. So I'm seeing a company color call outs. See if it's hiding in the back. No. Do not see color colors anywhere. Interesting. Uh, then the torsion bars, more of the hull, and the extra track links. Wheels on, which if they're all painted up, you probably want to do last because you're going to have to paint the tank. Putting the tracks together. There's the template, there's how you do it. Looks simple enough. It's easy to say when you're not actually doing it, but there's a template for the rubber pads, there's the template for the tracks and sliding parts in. Putting the tracks on, which again, at the end, there is your engine that I've been talking about. 
very nicely detailed with the turbocharger. And the hull, putting the bulkheads and the engine in. And there's the engine covers going on. And the side, top of the side skirts. And the front fenders. Attaching the top and the bottom hull. Putting the grills on. It looks like the engine's exposed right here. See if there's an actual cover for it. There's not yet. The engine's still exposed going into putting more parts on the hull. There's the engine cover right there so you don't have to glue it down. Uh, there's for the deditching log hooks. Headlights, side skirts, which you'll probably have to leave off and paint separate or attach them with white tack or something because you're not putting the tracks on yet. Deditching log, more cable. This is the cable that comes with it, 100 millimeters long, right there. The barrels, some more hoses. There's the gun barrel. Comes in multiple parts. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight parts for the gun barrel. Reactive armor going on the turret, bottom of the turret. Looks like a control panel that you'll be able to see from the open hatch. More reactive armor on top. More lights, more hatches. And smoke launchers. More various parts of the hull, the searchlights, those cool red eyes that you get in another older main kit where you actually get LEDs for it. I have that somewhere in the stash too. And more parts for the turret. Commander's hatch it looks like. Right there, another control box. And the machine gun. Going on. Look again at that matlet. Oh, it's on there. Matlet's going on here. So you can use either the rubber one or the two. Well, actually, it looks like the two part one goes inside the rubber one. So there you go. I was mistaken. So the cover goes over the regular matlet part. And it all goes together in there. See, that's why we look at directions. There's your machine gun going onto the top. Your regular gun, your big old fat gun going on top, and attaching the turret, and sprue map, sprue map, and finally color callouts. No particular, oh yeah, there's um, Meng with AK, because Meng does make their own paint, which is an AK brand, and um, Mr. Hobby Acquiesce, or Accretion as it's now called. So there. Here's your color callouts, two colors, AK Meng and Mr. Hobby Aqueous Acreus, Grecian. And I'm guessing these are the different battalions of tanks, although I don't know if they're called battalions in Russian. So you can number them up. I'm assuming the front one here's the commander tank. And there you go. That's it. All done. All good. There's Mr. Putin and his bear. And there's your nice cover art. Thanks for watching. Oops, can't even see that, can you? Zoom right there. Thanks for watching this sprue review of this special edition, limited edition T90 with the Russian. Genuine commemorative medal for the 60th anniversary of the victory of the Great Patriotic War. That's what that says. And for the rest of us, that's World War II. For the Russians, it was a Great Patriotic War. Thanks for watching. Hope you're going to sit your ass at that bench and build something now. If you want one of these, you better get them soon because they are a limited number. I grabbed mine as soon as I saw it available. At Spur Brothers. Home of fine scale modeling throughout the world.
St. Louis, Missouri, I think. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.